Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making Indian basmati white rice in my Instapot. And I'm doing something different that I haven't done before. I'm using this measurement cup that came with my Instapot. Previously I had used a standard uh, measuring cup for dry ingredients. And that gives me more than just this cup would. This cup is if I just pat the rice completely flush with the top. Uh, two of those cup measurements gives me this exact amount that I have poured into the dish. If I tried doing that, which I did at first, uh, with the standard dry ingredients cup measurement, this is the extra amount I get uh, trying to do two full cups using this as opposed to just the plastic cup. So this is two cups, just the plastic cup. This plus this extra is what you'll get if you use a standard dry measuring cup. So anyway, last time I tried doing it, there was some rice that stuck to the bottom. I'm hopeful that this time I will have the right amount, which is a one-to-one -one ratio uh, you know, one cup of rice to one cup of water. And so I'm doing two cups today. So I've got two cups of water and I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of real salt, super fine. And we'll see how it comes. But first I'm going to put this in a colander and I'm going to rinse it out uh, so that all the excess starch is rinsed off. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, so I rinsed this for basically several minutes and I put my hands in there and swished it around to kind of polish it up and speed up the cleaning process, make sure there wasn't anything in there that wasn't rice. And uh, I'm ready to put it in the Instant Pot now. The rice, water and salt are now inside the Instant Pot. I used this plastic spatula to knock off any pieces of wet rice that accidentally were sticking to the stainless steel inner lining pan. Now I'm going to put the lid on and finish cooking. I just put the lid on and the uh, pressure spout is now on sealing and so I'm going to hit the uh, pressure cook button and set it for four minutes. Where are we here? Pressure cook. And uh, I'm going to knock it down. A negative one here. So it's four minutes. It will seal and cook naturally and it'll take a good 10 or 15 minutes to release the pressure, which is what I'm going to do. It's been a little more than 15 minutes since the rice has finished cooking and the pressure pin is now flat with the surface of the lid. So we know it's safe to open. We don't have to do a quick release. Uh, when I open it though, I'm still gonna be careful because I know there's gonna be a lot of steam. So hold on, I'm gonna open it and then I'll show you what's there inside. There was a minimal amount of steam and as you can see, the rice looks pretty good. Let me get the paddle so I can fluff it up a bit and see if there's any sticking to the bottom. So as you can see, uh, the key warm is still on. I'm probably going to turn that off now. Uh, I used the paddle to remove the rice from the bottom. It looks like it's cooked perfectly and it smells really good. So I'm going to let this cool and then I'm going to put it in the containers for storage, uh, many of which will go into the freezer so that I could have it whenever I need it. I'll be back with that soon. I hit the cancel to stop the keep warm. And then I use the paddle to lift up all the rice from the bottom to sort of help the process along so that it can cool and I can put it away. And it looks pretty good. I got three of these Systema containers filled from the rice that I made in the Instant Pot. I can put these in the freezer. They can handle the freezer as well as the fridge. And the plastic is made from corn, not petroleum, I believe. So I do prefer that. And I just kind of wanted to show you what it looked like at the bottom of the Instapot once I got all the rice out. You can see there's really nothing that's, there's just a minimal amount that's stuck to the bottom. If I really wanted to scrape and scrape, I could probably get these last few grains, but it's not worth it to me. 
So uh, it mostly all cooked perfectly, and I think that's about what you can expect. Okay, so I put the lids on, and two of these I'm going to put in the freezer and one in the fridge. It is important to cool these uh, in the refrigerator or freezer for almost a day to turn it into a resistant starch if you are following the plant paradox slash Dr. Gundry way of turning these into resistant starches. So I am and I can tell you that I get at least a couple meals out of each one of these containers. Like I could take half of one of these containers, put it into a big batch of rice soup like I did last week when my daughter was sick and we both ate from it. We both had huge portions and that was just from half of one of these containers. We ate, we each, you know, so we each had uh, what we wanted and it was a lot. So, you know, theoretically you can get up to like four servings for each one of these. It's a lot. So that's about it.